In this video, we will discuss what happens when we disturb an equilibrium situation by either adding or removing reactants or products, changing the volume of a container, or changing the temperature of a reaction mixture. We will introduce Le Chatelier's principle, which explains what will happen when we disturb an equilibrium mixture. If we add or remove reactants or products from an equilibrium mixture, we change the value of Q. For the reaction to get back to equilibrium, or for Q to equal K, the composition of the system must change to restore equilibrium. If we change the volume of a container that contains a gaseous equilibrium system, then we change the partial pressures of the gaseous reactants and products. We will then change Q, and for the reaction to get back to equilibrium, the composition of the system must change to restore equilibrium. If we change the temperature of the system, we change the value of K. In order to restore equilibrium, the system must change. We call all these changes equilibrium disruptors. In order to restore equilibrium, we will refer to Le Chatelier's principle. It was named after Henry Louis Le Chatelier, an influential French chemist. Le Chatelier's principle states that if you disturb a system at equilibrium, the system will respond by shifting in a direction to relieve the disruption. What happens when you add or remove a reactant or product in an equilibrium system? For this generic reaction equation, 2A gas in equilibrium with B gas, Kc will equal the concentration of B divided by the concentration of A squared. Q will also equal the concentration of B divided by the concentration of A squared, just not at equilibrium. If you add reactants, A, you will lower the value of Q because you are increasing the denominator and the reaction will shift to the right. The reaction will respond by consuming reactants, A, to form more products, B. If you remove reactants, you will raise the value of Q because you are decreasing the denominator. Therefore, the reaction will shift to the left. The reaction will respond by producing reactants, A, and consuming products, B. If you add products, B, you will raise the value of Q because you are increasing the numerator and the reaction will shift to the left. The reaction will respond by consuming products, B, to form more reactants, A. If you remove products, you will lower the value of Q because you are decreasing the numerator. Therefore, the reaction will shift to the right. The reaction will respond by producing products, B, and consuming reactants, A. Since we are disturbing the system at equilibrium, the system responds by shifting in a direction to relieve the disruption. What happens when you change the volume of the container that contains a gaseous equilibrium system? For the same generic reaction equation, 2A gas in equilibrium with B gas, we will now only consider Kp. Kp will equal the partial pressure of B divided by the partial pressure of A squared. Qp will also equal the partial pressure of B divided by the partial pressure of A squared, just not at equilibrium. If we decrease the volume of this reaction mixture, we will also increase the pressure of all the reactants and products in the reaction mixture. This is because of the relationship that pressure times volume equals a constant, or pressure and volume are inversely related. If we increase the pressure of the whole reaction mixture, the equilibrium will shift to the side of the fewer moles of gases. A way to look at this is if we increase the pressure of the system twofold, our QP expression then becomes 2 times the partial pressure of B divided by 2 times the partial pressure of A squared, or 2 times the partial pressure of B divided by 4 times the partial pressure of A squared. Therefore, the QP equals one half the value of KP. Since the QP is less than the KP, the reaction will shift to the right, toward the side with the fewer moles of gas, the products. If we increase the volume of this reaction mixture, we will decrease the pressure in the reaction mixture and the reaction will shift toward the sides with the more moles of gas. What happens if we increase or decrease the temperature of an equilibrium system? In this case, we do not change any of the reactants or products. We instead change the value of K but it is easier to assume that heat energy is a reactant or product and predict the change of the direction of the reaction this way. For an exothermic reaction, the heat energy is a product, and for an endothermic reaction, the heat energy is a reactant. If we increase the temperature of an exothermic reaction, we increase the heat energy. 
and the reaction will shift to the left to reestablish equilibrium. If we decrease the temperature of an exothermic reaction, we decrease the heat energy, and the reaction will shift to the right to reestablish equilibrium. For an endothermic reaction, if we increase the temperature, the reaction will shift to the right because we increase the heat energy. And if we decrease the temperature of an endothermic reaction, the reaction will shift to the left because we decreased the heat energy. See this table for our generic equation, 2A gas in equilibrium with B gas, if the reaction is endothermic for the stresses we can apply, how the stresses are relieved, and which direction the reaction will shift. Now we will work on some problems using the concepts discussed in this video. 1. Predict which way the reaction will shift with the following changes with this reaction. CH4 gas plus H2O gas in equilibrium with 3H2 gas plus CO gas. A. Some CH4 gas is removed. B. Some H2O gas is added. C. Some H2 gas is added. D. Some CO gas is removed. E. A catalyst is added to the reaction mixture. F. The volume of the reaction container is increased. First, let's write the Q expression for this reaction. It is the concentration of H2 cubed times the concentration of CO divided by the concentration of CH4 times the concentration of H2O. For part A, if we remove some CH4 gas, which is a reactant, you will raise the value of Q because we are decreasing the denominator. Therefore, the reaction will shift to the left. The reaction will respond by producing reactants, CH4 and H2O, and consuming products, H2 and CO. For part B, when H2O is added, which is a reactant, you will lower the value of Q because we are increasing the denominator. Therefore, the reaction will shift to the right. The reaction will respond by consuming reactants, CH4 and H2O, and producing products, H2 and CO. For part C, when H2 is added, which is a product, we will raise the value of Q because we are increasing the numerator. Therefore, the reaction will shift to the left. The reaction will respond by producing reactants, CH4 and H2O, and consuming products, H2 and CO. For part D, when we remove some CO, which is a product, we will lower the value of Q because we are decreasing the numerator. Therefore, the reaction will shift to the right. The reaction will respond by consuming reactants, CH4 and H2O, and producing products, H2 and CO. In part E, a catalyst is added to the reaction mixture. The definition of a catalyst is a substance that increases the rate of a chemical reaction without undergoing any kind of change itself. This graph shows that when we add a catalyst to the reaction mixture, the rate of the reaction will increase, usually by lowering the activation energy of the reaction. But the catalyst has no effect on the starting and ending conditions of the reaction. Therefore, the reaction will not shift in either direction, and adding the catalyst will have no effect. In part F, if we increase the reaction container's volume, we will also decrease the pressure of all the reactants and products in the reaction mixture. This is because of the relationship that pressure times volume equals a constant, or pressure and volume are inversely related. If we decrease the pressure of the whole reaction mixture, the equilibrium will shift to the side with more moles of gases. This is because the reaction mixture relieves the stress caused by the decrease of pressure due to the increase in volume. Therefore, the reaction will shift to the right, to the side with more moles of gas, the products. Two. Predict which direction the reactions will shift and answer the questions. A. The volume of the reaction container containing this reaction, 4 NH3 gas plus 5 O2 gas, in equilibrium with 4 NO gas plus 6 H2O gas, is decreased. B. The volume of the reaction container containing this reaction, 2 H2O gas in equilibrium with 2 H2 gas plus O2 gas is increased. C. The temperature is increased for the reaction H2 gas plus Br2 gas in equilibrium with 2 HBr gas that has a delta H value of negative 103.79 kilojoules per mole. D. The temperature is decreased for the reaction PCl5 gas in equilibrium with PCl3 gas 
plus Cl2 gas that is an endothermic reaction. E. For letters C and D, what effect do the temperature changes have on their Kc values? For letter A, if we decrease the volume of this reaction mixture, we will also increase the pressure of all the reactants and products in the reaction mixture. This is because of the relationship that pressure times volume equals a constant, or pressure and volume are inversely related. If we increase the pressure of the whole reaction mixture, the equilibrium will shift to the side with the fewer moles of gases. This is because the reaction mixture relieves the stress caused by the increase of pressure due to the decrease in volume. The reactants have 9 moles of gas, 4 from the NH3 and 5 from the O2, and the products have 10 moles of gas, 4 from the NO and 6 from the H2O. The reaction shifts to the left toward the side with the fewest numbers of moles of gas, in this case, the reactants. For letter B, if we increase the volume of this reaction mixture, we will also decrease the pressure of all the reactants and products in the reaction mixture. This is because of the relationship that pressure times volume equals a constant, or pressure and volume are inversely related. If we decrease the pressure of the whole reaction mixture, the equilibrium will shift to the side with more moles of gases. This is because the reaction mixture relieves the stress caused by the decrease of pressure due to the increase in volume. The reactants have 2 moles of gas, 2 from the H2O, and the products have 3 moles of gas, 2 from the H2 and 1 from the O2. The reaction shifts to the right toward the side with the most number of moles of gases, in this case, the products. For letter C, if we increase the temperature for the reaction with the negative delta H value, we have an exothermic reaction. Exothermic reactions have heat energy as a product. If we increase a product, then we need to shift the reaction to the left in order to consume the heat energy. We will produce some reactants and consume some products. For letter D, we decrease the temperature for an endothermic reaction. Endothermic reactions have energy as a reactant. If we decrease a reactant, then we shift the reaction to the left in order to produce more of that reactant, the heat energy. We will then consume some products and produce some reactants. For letter E, to determine the effect of temperature changes have on the Kc values of C and D, let's write the Kc expressions of these two parts. For part C, the Kc expression is the concentration of HBr squared divided by the concentration of H2 times the concentration of Br2. If we increase the temperature of this reaction and shift the reaction to the left, then our value of Kc is going to decrease. This is because the concentrations of the reactants will increase and the concentrations of products will decrease. For part D, the Kc expression is the concentration of PCl3 times the concentration of Cl2 divided by the concentrations of PCl5. If we decrease the temperature of this reaction and shift the reaction to the left, then our value of Kc is going to decrease. This is because the concentration of the products will decrease and the concentrations of reactants is going to increase.